So about 32, 33 years ago at some point, I started writing my campaign, my uh, Dungeons and Dragons campaign. I called it Athalia. It was the main continent on the world called Argoth. And um, it started out with me just wanting to get together with a few friends and sit down and learn how to play D&D uh, the, or at least have fun together playing D&D. And quickly, very quickly, I fell in love with the game. I love what it stood for and what it meant for me in my life. I've been running basically that same campaign for all that time. And I just wrote the end of it. And the worst thing about it, I can't talk about it. <laughs> Greetings and welcome back to another exciting and adventurous episode of the podcast Does Dungeons and Dragons. I'm your host, DMJ. Now, what I want to talk about today, unfortunately, I cannot go into great detail about, but what I can talk about is the history of my campaign, a campaign that started uh, about 32 or 33 years ago. I had played D&D previously, but under different circumstances, a different time, a different place. And so when I picked up second edition, that's really when my journey began. And I learned very quickly how much in love I was with Dungeons and Dragons. Now, my campaign takes place in Athalia, the main continent on the world of Argoth. And it started with five or six friends that got together one night and made characters. And I started coming up with the storyline. I call it a storyline because it really is a story that I write. I write, uh, you know, from the beginning of, you know, the beginning of the game right until, you know, the end of the game. There is a story written there. Now, obviously, the characters can change what happens in that story based on their actions. I never, like, pigeonhole them and make them go through the loops I want them to go through or the hoops I want them to go through. However, there is a general story that no matter how I have to veer it as a dungeon master, the players are always in charge of that. So I was watching a D&D video and I really wasn't paying attention to it much. I was mostly on my phone and I was waiting for laundry or, you know, as life hands you, things like that. And just kind of the outside of my, my hearing, I heard something uh, on the screen that made all the gears in my head just turn and realize that I haven't been running separate campaigns all these years with different characters. I've been running the same, same campaign based on the original characters that are considered the heroes of Athalia. And so those heroes Heroes, amongst them was also a villain, Alistair, who was played by a good friend of mine. I, I won't say his name on here, but he wanted to be evil. And so he became evil and, and acted evil. And the rest of the party at some point had to stop him. And it was probably the coolest thing that could have happened to a new dungeon master who just, he just succeeded. Like it was the perfect campaign. Every story was filled with emotional ties. You felt like when someone died, like not just a character, but an NPC, it broke the party sometimes and left them like just shattered for the next few game sessions. Um, anywho, they established the baseline for me as what I think D and D should be uh, having that emotional tie to not just yourself, not just your friends in your party, but also the characters, the NPCs, and even some kind of emotional tie to the villains themselves. So that was what made Athalia so easy for me at the beginning was learning that my players can kind of mold the vision I already had. Uh, the towns that I've named that haven't been inhabited yet, they now can name those people and locations. N not personally, I'll of course name them, but if they're going there, I got to be ready for it. You know how it is, it is as a dungeon master. So when the gears fell into place today, I it brought a tear to my eye because I realized that something, I've never done anything in my life this long, 30 plus years. Like I can't think of anything. Well, maybe drawing or singing or playing guitar, all those things I've done about, you know, about the same amount of time, maybe a little bit longer, but uh, it's one of the things that like here and there, it comes and goes in my life. Like I don't dungeon master continuously for 30 years. There might be 10 years where I'm running two years off three years where I'm playing. So over the course of that time, it's not just consistently, you know, but I've gone from second edition all the way up to fifth edition. And we will of course be transitioning over into 5.24 or whatever the hell we're calling it these days. I'm excited about it nonetheless, but here we are. I got to the end of their campaign. It kind of fell apart, but it's how it ended. 
And the next party came in, and it was a group of all new players, a whole new group of friends that I'd met over the course of time of playing D&D, not necessarily related to D&D, but people who were interested in playing D&D or had played D&D. So this second group was like the second generation of heroes. And unfortunately, I think I've... I tied their story too closely to the original story, um, and I should have given them a little bit more freedom. But I think if you ask any of those players, they'll say that they had a good time. Um, and once again, I don't think all the stories were as emotionally strong or, or all the games were as emotionally strong as the original party, but I loved it for a different reason. It was the chaos. This party was very different. In a way, they half of the party wanted to do wild and crazy things. The other half were trying to keep them in line. And so they're like the misfits of Athalia. They're the misfit heroes of Athalia, that second generation of, of not only characters but players that came through. And they left the world with an interesting history and changed dynamically and geographically the world in many ways. Um, their stories are just as important as that original generation. But through that time, all those original heroes that survived were still dwelling and living in my world of Athalia. So they would interact with the players. And, and I used that a lot. And it was easy to do because I knew the players and I knew the characters. And it, it was, you know good information to draw from over the years that I'd been running with them. And so I, uh, we moved along and shortly after that, I moved to Virginia. I sold almost all my Dungeons and Dragons stuff, which is stupid. I'm a stupid idiot. And I would give anything in the world to have all my D and D stuff back at this point. And thankfully I have recovered some of it over the years, but not, not all of it, of course. Uh, what are we talking about? Oh, yes, the next generation. The next generation came about when I met another group of friends after moving to Virginia. I was working with my friend Jim's wife, Karen, and he had two sons, Nick and Chris, and all of them, well, no, Jim did not play D&D yet. My game was the very first game he ever played in, which is quite the honor because he's a good man, a good friend, and the story itself was fun to to provide for him and i hope he's always enjoyed them anywho this next generation of players there was a mix of about eight players that would come and go never that many maybe six at the most but um their campaign never really got to go where it needed to go it, it seemed like every time we'd get there somebody would move or somebody would have a kid or something happens. As you get older, that's just what happens. That's why the VTTs, I think, are so fantastic because they still allow you to connect with old players and new players and make it all nice and simple and put it in a package and give it to you on Christmas. Um, but their arc still kind of exists in the world. Their story still exists. Some of their players are actually trapped in the past at this point, which kind of is an interesting thing to bring up it's not about the end of the campaign however there is some kind of time travel elements coming into play in the story uh nothing that would uh, retcon anything from my past or ruin the story of those who have come before but some things that need to be done some cleanup that needs to happen and anyway that's where we are now with the latest party and it's comprised of some of the party that I met first here in Virginia and some new friends that I've made along the way and I I'm always inspired by players who enjoy coming to the table or the virtual table to, to play as me as their dungeon master because it's their time and, and I appreciate that they're willing to give me their time. So I try to put forth as much effort as I can into this game and I can't believe that I finally have an ending to it and that they're going to be the party that ushers in both the end of my original campaign and the beginning of the new. Now, I have had a world of Athalia, or the world of Argoth, rather, for a very long time. However, the only places that people have ever been have been either continental to Athalia or some of the larger islands around it. However, no one has ever gone on a boat and traveled or taken a dragon and traveled to many of the other locations on my world. And uh, Shenkata is one of them. It's a jungle kind of paradise type of uh, land that's attached to a, a, a mainland, or it's uh, right off the coast of a mainland, rather. And I think that's where the story is going to pick up for the next campaign, which, which is great. I feel like in a way, and it, it really did bring a tear to my eye when I thought, I'm finally going to be able to bury the past and move on with something new. But the thing that's great about the best part of it... The, is the fact that I'm bringing this party 
over with it. Like it, it's a bridge for me. So it's not like I'm saying goodbye completely. I'm just saying, Hey, that was a great story, but there are many other great stories to tell. And, uh, I really hope you've enjoyed this episode of the podcast. I really like making it. And if you guys are loving the content that I'm creating as much as I love creating the content that you guys are watching, would you please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, and hitting that little bell icon. Cause it'll let you know every time I put out a new video. Don't forget to make somebody smile today and make yourself a better person tomorrow than you were today, tomorrow. Let's make the world spin a little bit happier and a little bit more geekier together. Let's sing and dance in the sun and in the rain as one my brothers and sisters. Oh yeah. Live life to the fullest and love every moment of it because you just never know when that last moment's going to come for you. However, never live in fear of that moment. Always live in love, but never let your inner child die. Ooh wee. Take care of yourselves, take care of one another, and take care of those around you who cannot take care of themselves, for they are the ones that need it the most. And if no one has told you today that they love you, the vodcast loves you very much, just the way you are. All right, guys, do no harm. I'm Jason Oliveira. This is the vodcast, and I'll catch you guys a little bit further on down the road to 50. Take care, my friends, and happy adventuring. Don't go to sleep with a catch it in your pocket. <laughs>